You're watching Throttle Heads. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Acura TLX Type S, which means that after 11 years, the Type S badge is back. And it means that this family sedan is not only sharper in every way than the base TLX, it also has a twin scroll turboed V6 that puts out 355 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque. And at a starting price of $60,000 Canadian, it's an underdog. And there's nothing better than an underdog story. And after being quite impressed with the base TLX, we had high hopes. Let's see what this could do. And a big thank you to Mike at Markham Acura for lending us his TLX today. <laughs> okay, first things first. I come from a different land, a place where you might hear the phrase, boil water. And in England, they don't have the Acura brand at all. In fact, the NSX is a Honda NSX over there. And they stopped making anything with a Type S badge years before I even arrived on these here shores. So I don't have any preconceived notions. The Type S badge means nothing to me. It's a clean slate. But what I do know is that it's the performance one. Not the Type R, but daily driving meets performance, which they say has a blistering speed. We'll get to that in a second. And one of the ingredients in that recipe is sound. What does it sound like in the cabin? In Sport Plus mode? It's got kind of a really nice V6 note, actually. And outside, the exhaust is making some lovely sounds as well. They've done some good stuff with the sound of this car. The next, then, is the aforementioned blistering speed. Now, I don't expect this to match something like the BMW M340i. It massively undercuts that in price, and that is the clear speed leader in this space. But something like an Audi S4 has less horsepower. Oh, there's mine. So what happens when you do a dig race? Uh, he shot off and he's continuing to shoot off and he's flying away five, six, seven car lengths. Okay, back to the track. So the Audi S4 crushes this, but I don't see this as a German competitor at all, actually, because it's also undercutting the S4 in price. To me, it's more of like a Genesis G70 or Stinger GT fighter, Cadillac CT5V, not Blackwing. And in that sense, it's still down on power, actually. Even by the numbers, it's still down on power. It's, this is the newest performance sedan on the block. Even if it's in the middle range, it shouldn't come in at the very bottom immediately. But maybe we'll put those cars head to head soon and test that out. But at least, I mean, around here, without a competitor by its side, it does feel quick. The power's very twin turbocharged. It kind of, it feels like you've got all the torque and you pretty much do from about 1500 RPM. So you find yourself not so much chasing the red line as just staying inside the torque band. At eight tenths, which is what I'm driving this at right now, it feels pretty good. I would, I would compare this to like a Canyon Drive or a B road. I mean, but it's still, there's no getting away from the fact that it still feels slow compared to its competitors. And I think a part of that is that the TLX Type S has had a big lunch. A really, really big lunch. Take a Genesis G70, less than 3,900 pounds. BMW M340i, just over 3,900 pounds. Same as an Audi S4. This weighs over 4,200 pounds. It's fat. That's two more of me as passengers compared to the other ones. But that's not an issue around town. In fact, it's nice to drive around town. The ride is good, you know, the throttle's calibrated well, it's easy to point, visibility's nice. But we're on a track because this is the Type S. Now, I, disclaimer, when I tested 
the regular TLX, I pulled a fuse on that car uh, to defeat the traction control entirely. And that blew a fuse over in Japan. In fact, I got in a lot of trouble. They didn't like it because what they do with these cars is they're very, very careful in the way they calibrate the driving modes and the suspension and the traction control and the differential to work together to make a car that drives really well. And at eight tenths right now, I did a good job. I'm in Sport Plus mode and, uh, you know, it feels pretty good. Turns in well, it's got some grip, everything's well calibrated. It's working together. There's some synchronicity to the way that this drives. But something happens when you start to push it. The thing is, something like this, a Genesis G70 or a BMW or a Mercedes, is a fundamentally rear-wheel drive based car. That means the engine runs this way and it powers the rear wheels first and then the fronts kick in whenever needed. The TLX, on the other hand, is a fundamentally front-wheel drive-based car, and the engine runs this way. Powers the front wheels first and the rear wheels when needed. But what Acura did was something clever. They added a system called SH All-Wheel Drive, and what that does is it actually has an overdrive gear on the rear axle. So when the clutch packs engage, it spins the rear wheels faster than the front wheels which should cause some oversteer. SH all-wheel drive isn't new. It's been around for a while, but it is new for the Type S. And in the Type S, they've calibrated it to be more aggressive than the regular TLX. So it pushes a little bit more torque to those rear wheels. So what happens when you really start to lean on this car? Nothing. Nothing happens. In fact, the normal TLX, when I turn the traction control off, would kind of do a little power slide. This one won't do that, and I'm getting a lot of understeer. Turn it in, full on the throttle, come on, come on. Something happened, nothing, zero. Just slow torque building and grip coming out of the corner. Hmm. And the harder I push it, the more I start to realize things like these Pirelli tires are not holding on, they can't deal with the mass. I'm having a difficult time assessing where the front and rear grip levels are. I'm not, there's the understeer. I'm not getting on with the transmission at all. And the brakes are not, not giving me as much stopping power as I want. As I said, the SHL wheel drive system overdrives the rear axle like a Focus RS or a Mitsubishi Evo. So I should be able to use the throttle. Come on, rotate nothing, just zero. Come on. All right, let's try some liftoff oversteer. I'm gonna use the natural weight transfer of the car. That's just understeer. Come on, give me more. No. <laughs> I get it, it's not a type R, but I was hoping that if I toss it in like this, no, I just, I cannot get anything but understeer out of this car. I even went so far as to do the pedal dance, where you flip on and off the traction control and the parking brake to fully defeat the stability control, which <clears throat> should have just been a button, but that didn't change anything. So now I have stability control flashing at me, and the traction control is fully off. Now we get to finally see what this car is all about. Doesn't appear to be any better. Okay, we're gonna go into a corner a little bit quick and lift off and see what happens. No, it's not. It's still not doing what I want. It's just too heavy. They're trying to shoehorn me in to a certain style of driving and I'm just not, it's not jiving with me. But let's just do a hot lap anyway. Okay, time for the lap time. As usual, our rules are five laps only, one warm-up lap, three hot laps, and one cool down, and that's all the time I have to set the best possible lap time. And yes, the times were done at the beginning of the day while the tires were still fresh. Now, the TLX. 
I will say that on first impression, this is a very sharp car. It feels much more accurate than a G70 in steering and suspension precision. But as I mentioned before, when you really push this car, it doesn't want to play ball. And at that point, a G70 would be more balanced. I spent a lot of time fighting understeer, and the brakes had a really hard time keeping up with the mass of the car. I liked to use the transmission with the paddles, but the TLX didn't like that either, and kept auto upshifting for me, no matter what mode I was in. Let's watch the rest of the lap. Okay. You look quite relaxed after that lap. Yeah, it's not a very intense car. Oh. There it is. Okay. All right, I got the lap time. You interested? I'm very interested. This did a 1 16 6. Okay, all right. So that puts it a little behind the first year Supra. Yep. Was that like two seconds in front of the Golf R? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. You wanted a bit more out of it? Yeah. You know it's, what? It's a Type S, right? It's not a Type R. Okay. This is, I own a car in this class of vehicle, and all I want from it is to be comfortable with a bit of flair and, and be quick. Yeah, but also based on the marketing, I kind of expected it to be a little bit more exciting than that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, like, it fell down at, at 10 tenths. Yes. It they, really did. And they like, do, it they just, do say blistering speed. Blistering speed. Blistering speed. Like, I, I don't have any blisters. Which actually means that the Audi S4 must be warp speed because it mm. dusted this. Yeah, what happened there? That's confusing because didn't well, they bring an S4 to the press day? My S4 is completely stock, by the way. It is completely bone, stock. Bone stock. It's also not even the most recent S4. Well, it, mechanically the most recent. Yeah, it yeah, it yeah, didn't whatever. get the nip and the tuck of the face there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Suckling the, the teeth. The <laughs> Apparently that's how you do plastic surgery these days. Bunch of pervs. Okay. That was a wonderful tangent. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, we really appreciated it. Yeah, this isn't quick enough. It's just not quick enough. It no. doesn't handle well enough. It, the, 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 the SHL wheel drive system does not make up for the extra mass. The tire choice is crap. The brakes didn't work. But it, that's only <laughs> when you're driving it like balls out off the wall going flat and out I, 10 I, tenths. I don't think you drive these cars 10 tenths. How does it look? It looks great, actually. I mean, there's a lot of people that say they don't like the look of it. The front's too busy and the rear's kind of weird. I think the proportions are cool. I like the, this line going down the side. The, 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 the shot of it from the side looks really cool because it kind of goes up on the hood a little bit with these lines. Yeah, and, and it, it does come alive with the Type S stuff. Like, you've got the diffuser, you've got the, the, the Brembo brakes. Even to be fair, the regular... The, the regular... TLX. TLX. <laughs> it's not an exciting word. <laughs> I forgot what it's called. I've been calling it Type S all day. You the could be watching anything else in the world yeah, right now. Well just There's up. loads of naked people on the internet. The, did you know that? I just found out recently. Uh, um, the, yeah. t, the TLX is a good looking car as it is. Yeah. This, the, the Type S stuff is very cool. But the, the thing with this car that you really have to know if you're going to buy one is that don't buy it expecting to do track days with it. It just doesn't do that. But everything else... It, let, me, let me provide an interesting great. thing. Would you take this over an IS300? Because it also has an incredible sound system. I think I would. I think I would. There you go. Yeah. So it doesn't fail. Um, speaking of sound system, can we look at the interior? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's good. So the differences between like this it. and the normal TLX. Yeah. First of all, Type S on the steering wheel. Oh, huge. Type S on the oh, headrest. So good. <laughs> And Tell me another one. What do you got? Ultra suede seats. No. 16-way adjustable. What? <laughs> <laughs> do we seem like we've been on the track for a bit? We have. It's really hot today. Uh, Losing our minds. Okay. Yeah, you said the sound system's brilliant. That, that and the IS300, if you're, if you're looking at this class of car and, you, and you're a radio head, that doesn't work. That's not it. No, that's a band. Sound head. Nope. Also not it. Audio... File. File. There we go. You got it. Uh, then this is one of the great... Audio file this, this is a really good sound system. Yeah. Things that I don't like. Go on. Push button shifter. Don't care. It's, no, you're wrong. It's stupid. 
automatic car, I'm driving a press drive, and I get on with my day. And if I'm doing a three- Until you have to do a three-point turn. And I can fill the reverse just by pulling, and I press the circle. Yeah, but you have to look. No, you don't. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, well, then I need to work on my peripheral vision. Easy. My, my only issues, so, the, go on. Yeah, well, I was going to point out much like the steering wheel. I think it's just really cool. It's a great looking. steering wheel. It's Feels a great, great steering wheel. perforated leather. It's really nice. I like it a lot. The gauge cluster's fine. Yep, yep. Uh, for the price range, I expect. Although that. red on silver, not it's bright. It's a decision. It's not a decision. Bright. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, of, of decisions, it's not a good one. No, it's not perfect. It's also missing the tech that the Kia Stinger has. When, yeah. when you indicate, it doesn't show a screen, doesn't That's show right. a cyclist coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it could do with that. Uh, the design is going to be people's preference. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I mean, if you're into it, I'm not going to complain. I think it's kind of cool. It's different. Um, it is different. T so we got this absolute position touchpad here. No, 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 I don't like it. I'm not a big fan. Uh, yeah, and the, the screen isn't a touch screen. Um, I love the tambourine. When you... That, that again, sounds like something like... when you select something trying... in Age of Empires. Trying... It does that. When, you, when <laughs> yeah. you buy something in Age of Empires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seats are comfortable. The rear seats don't have a lot of room. Yeah. No, and they're not amazingly comfortable. They're fine. The Stinger in this class wins. For the rear seats. For the rear seats. The, yeah. yeah, the Genesis G70 is also lacking. Also not What good. is that? And this is a big car. You know, we, 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 when we first looked at the TLX, we had the Accord. And the yeah. Accord is more spacious inside. So I, yes. And like again, maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe if you're not taking passengers much, it's not an, an issue. Mm -hmm. But with these cars, I want them to be able to do everything. It's already quick, all-wheel drive, great sound system, comfortable seats. Like that one extra thing, and that's something the Audi S4 does really well, yeah. and, the, and the N340i. Yep, yep, they have good. Yeah, I, it just seems like a why, 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 why not, why not prioritize it? Yeah. Otherwise, give me a two-seater. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I guess kids in the back is the other option. I don't have much more to say about this because it's not much different than the, than the regular no. TLX. Look, I like that it exists. I like that it undercuts the Germans. I mean, the I think the M340i is the untouchable leader of this class. It's yeah, but if you're looking for like driving dynamics, uh, the the 330i with the sport package is the one to get. For the same money as this? For pretty much the same money as this. I think it's... I don't really like the interior that much, but I think it's a it's a better driving car. It's more dynamically. And we haven't tried the new C class with all the new tech. We haven't, no. I'm and that's sure going to be similar. I'm price. sure it's very nice. Yeah. Listen, it adds. People like the reliability of this. They like if you like the styling, you like the reliability, and you're not going to track it. I think it, it answers a lot of questions. It does, um, but at the same time, I think Acura faulted on a few very important points on this car, and I think that they could have, like, being serious, not joking. Like, yeah. honestly, I think that. That there's a there's a, a few serious areas where it doesn't it doesn't quite work for me. Well, we left room. We we tried the TLX. We yep. gave it the benefit of the doubt. We did. We were nice to it. And we said the Type S is coming. Yep. Did it? I guess it just didn't quite deliver. I don't think it delivered in the way that it could have. Okay. Yeah. The Type S then fulfills most of its duties. <laughs> duties. Anyway, it's a competent cruiser, a reliable companion, a commuter's friend, but it just doesn't quite tickle the performance itch the way we hoped it would. We think it would have been better off maybe being a bit louder on the highway and a whole lot lighter, and perhaps with a slightly more aggressive chassis tune to let that all-wheel drive system really do its job. Either way, if you're looking for a Honda reliability imbued, comfortable, stylish way to get to work, and to confidently crush a back road on the way home, look no further. Just ignore that Audi S4 overtaking you as you merge onto the highway. And a huge thank you to Michelin Canada for replenishing the tyres from the day. Thanks for watching.